Donald Trump Jr. expected back in a New York courtroom today for a second day of testimony in the civil fraud trial against the family and the Trump Organization. The lawsuit accuses Don Jr. and his brother Eric of a scheme to inflate their father's net worth to gain benefits like loans uh, and insurance terms. It's one of the many court cases involving the former president, and the recent legal proceedings are giving the country a window into his mindset as he fights for a return to the White House. Trump has been on the attack, criticizing the process, Democrats, even judges. And that rhetoric has cost him in the courtroom to some degree, but it has been fueling his campaign. CNN's Jeff Zeleny has more. The inflammatory rhetoric that's gotten Donald Trump into hot water in the courtroom... This judge is a very partisan judge. ...is the fuel of his political campaign. You have to get out and you have to fight like hell because these are dirty players. More than ever before, the former president is waging a campaign of vengeance, attacking judges, going after prosecutors, and raising the specter of violence. We will immediately stop all of the pillaging and theft. Very simply, if you rob a store, you can fully expect to be shot as you are leaving that store. Shot. In his third presidential bid, retribution has become a far louder rallying cry. He suggested Mark Milley, the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, should be executed for treason. He's joked about the brutal attack on former Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband. He's implored supporters to drive away his enemies. 2024 is our final battle. With you at my side, we will demolish the deep state. We will expel the warmongers. Get them all out of our government. While Trump's legal challenges are inexplicably linked with his presidential campaign, the disconnect is jarring. Even major court developments, like a tearful guilty plea from his former lawyer. If I knew then what I know now, I would have declined to represent Donald Trump in these post-election challenges. I look back on this whole experience with deep remorse. Haven't changed the view of many loyal Trump supporters. There's a lot more than you think that um, are in favor of Trump and felt that the last election was stolen and um, we just want, you know, we just want what's ours. Lori Scroggin saw the former president this week in Iowa. She's unbothered by criticism and dismissive of his Republican rivals, whom she believes should step aside. They're just nothing but a distraction and an annoyance, like a mosquito or a fly. You just want to... Yeah, poof them away and let's get down to the meat, the real politics. Let's get down to what Trump has to say. And Trump has a lot to say, stoking anger and rallying supporters to his defense. I promise you this. If you put me back in the White House, their reign will be over and America will be a free nation once again. Jeff Zeleny, CNN, Washington. Let's bring in CNN senior political commentator Scott Jennings. Um, Scott. The opponent of the former president, Ron DeSantis, made a really interesting point, I think, which is one that we all know, but the candidate saying it out loud, that basically the legal cases starting uh, with the New York DA's case really shifted the dynamics of this race when that first happened, and he's never really recovered since, paraphrasing to some degree. Is that going to change at all? Well, not in the Republican primary. If you look at the latest national surveys and you look at some of the state-by-state -state stuff, Trump continues to go up and up and up. Republicans just don't believe it, and they think that this election in general is a chance to get vindication for these court cases, for the impeachments, for Russia, for policy disputes, for all of it, really. And that's how they view it. Now, the question is, will general election voters view it that way? I have my doubts. I think if Trump is convicted of a felony in any of these cases, there will be a cohort of voters, some Republicans who just don't want to associate their franchise with a convicted felon or don't think someone who's been convicted should be in the White House, and that could be enough to, to scramble his reelection plans. Uh, of course, on the Democratic side, the scrambling, I think, could be if the third party candidates have ballot access in enough states. And so you see a situation here where the electorate is could, could find themselves very unsatisfied <laughs> with either a convicted felon or a president that they think is too old to serve a second term. What about the president really disregarding the gag orders repeatedly that, you know, judges have placed on him in some of these cases? Clearly, I think making this guy, the calculations got that the legal price is worth the political gain. Yeah, no question. That that would be off brand to follow the rules <laughs> and, to, and to do what, you know, the, the, the people who are persecuting us want us to do. Uh, I mean, I think he's going to continue to violate it. I mean, it, that's that's the brand. It's worth it for him to thumb his nose at the system here.
Uh, so I, I, I'm not surprised at all. I think it's part of the strategy. And I think when he does things like this, I think Republicans uh, who support him strongly uh, appreciate it. That's what they want him to do. He, they even, think something was weird if he didn't. Even if it lands him in jail for a short period of time? I mean, Ty Cobb, who was one of the president's attorneys way back when, said he thinks, you know, if he keeps violating these gag orders, the president could spend a little bit of time in jail. If they throw Donald Trump in jail, if you think people, his people, support him now, throw him in jail and see what happens. I mean, yeah. I mean, the, 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 it will be further evidence of what the argument he's making is they're using the legal system to try to keep you from, you know, having your, your day at the ballot box next November. I mean, that, that would be further evidence. So, I, I mean, I think you ought to face the same laws and consequences any of the rest of us would if we were in the same circumstances. But the, but the reaction to that, the political reaction to that, to me, is, is quite obvious. Scott, I, I don't want to go off-brand myself and ask about policy instead of politics here in these dynamics in the race. <laughs> But as all this is going on, we've written some of it. The New York Times has written a series of great stories about the outside groups of former Trump advisors who are planning for the 2025 inauguration, that administration, how different it will be, how they'll have people, loyalists, that will be willing to do what very rock rib conservative Republican lawyers in the last administration were not willing to do. I know you're both familiar with those Republicans and those lawyers, but also the policies that they're talking about here. What's your read on it when you see that? Because one of the biggest weaknesses of the first Trump administration was it couldn't actually deliver from the executive branch unless it was some agency issue. They're saying now they will be able to. Well, I think what they're saying is, is that in the first term, we didn't go far enough because we just didn't have the right people in place and maybe we didn't have the full understanding of how to go far enough. Now they're saying we'll get, we'll get smarter people, better people, and frankly, people who are willing to challenge the norms and guardrails that exist, you know, for, for most uh, presidential administrations. I mean, I think that what you're referencing is I even read that they were saying Federalist Society lawyers yep. yes, don't go exactly. far enough for us. Yeah. We're going to find lawyers who are going to go, who are going to go beyond that. And so, um, I mean, that's one way to run a railroad. <laughs> and I, to... uh, and uh, I, I, have, I, I, I worry about it because, because, you know, we have argued, Republicans have argued that Democrats have, have, have challenged norms, have challenged institutions, have tried to go around the Constitution. What, and so if you're also promising to do that, to me, it's, it pretends a very unstable future. I mean, part of the way we run the railroad here in the United States is, you know, we all agree to a certain set of parameters. This is the way things work. You operate inside of that. And sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. To say you're going to go outside of that, it's, 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 a, it's a troubling thing. The Fed sock squishes. Oh, Phil. Always. Always yeah. how everybody thinks about Scott. We appreciate you, man. Thank yeah. you.